Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today I want to share with you guys some advanced editing techniques in Lightroom, and we are in Lightroom 5. We've got a photograph I did of my buddy Kim, who is a musician, and we shot this with a Mamiya Leaf Credo 40 and one light, one little light. Okay, here we go. So what I want to do is a lot of times when you're doing a portrait edit, there's oftentimes areas that are darker, maybe blemishes or some lines that, that you really want to kind of like reduce or get out of the way, but you don't want it to be destructive to the point where the portrait doesn't look realistic. Now, for really, really heavy portrait editing and getting in really like on the pixel level and, and stuff like that, Photoshop is the king because that's where you're going to be able to have so much control. However, there are a lot of capabilities in Lightroom and let me show you what they are. And this is going to have to do with the healing brush tool or the cloning brush tool. Now to get to the cloning brush tool, all you have to do is either select it from the develop module right over here, or you can hit the Q key. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to be able to zoom in and get to the region that I want to affect here, like some of these harder lines, maybe that little bit right there and stuff like that. So I'm going to hit the Z key and that's going to take me to a one on one or one to one ratio. So I'm going to go right up here and I'm going to kind of just grab some areas that I want to affect. So for the time being, what I want to do is I want to just reduce the kind of intensity, the contrast of the lines on his forehead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with the cloning tool, or I'm going to put it into the healing mode. And I've got the feather off, I've got opacity to 100, and then the size is really going to depend on, you know, how much of the area I want to select. I can either use the bracket keys to increase or decrease the size, or I can actually, on my mouse, I can actually slide on the mouse and change the size as well, or I can do the slider over here. So I'm just going to grab this right here, and I'm just going to draw over it. And what it will do is it will select an area. Actually, let me turn on the H key, and the H key shows us where the pins are. So it's going to select an area. Um, where it will sample from. And what I want to do is I want to sample from an area that looks the same as far as toning and coloring and, and lightness as well. And I'm going to select it from there. Now, if I hit the H key again, it gets rid of that. And you can see that it basically replicated that area over there, but it also eliminated the line. I don't want that. I want the line to be there, but I just want it reduced. So what I'm going to do is with my opacity slider, I'm going to slide that guy back. And you can see now the line is coming back. And if we go all the way back to one, we can see it's pretty prominent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it to a point where it's less prominent, but it's still there. So I don't know, maybe somewhere around there. Let's, let's keep it around there for now. Okay. That's not bad. Actually, I'm just going to reduce it just a little bit further. So we're going to be there. Now, one thing to note, I'm going to grab another area here. I'm going to turn on the, I'm going to hit the H key again so I can see where my pins are. And when you select another area, it will remember the previous selection with your opacity. Now this is a little bit too far for me, so I'm going to bring that back and I'm going to put it in a similar area so that it looks similar in its tone and its and its intensity. And I'm going to hit the H key again and you can really see the difference there, okay? And I'm going to hit the H key again so I can see my pins and I'm going to grab this line right here. And there you go. And it's selecting from that area. That looks pretty good actually. I'm going to hit the H key and turn it off and I'm just going to keep going through this and grabbing a few little more areas and you guys will be able to see in a moment the difference between the sampled and the unsampled version or the corrected and uncorrected version and um, we'll be able to go from there. Okay, very cool. So now if I go back to my brush tool and I hit this little slider, okay, that is going to turn off all the spot removal I did. So you guys will be able to see the difference. Okay, here's the difference. Look at the difference there. You see that? Huge difference. Now look, if we zoom out, it's even more profound where you can really see that there is, that's the edited version. That's the unedited version. It's subtle. It's subtle, but it, the, the portrait is a little bit smoother. Okay, so let's zoom in there. Um, let's grab a few more of these little blemishes. I'm just going to grab this one over here. And in the case of this one, 
I want to kind of eliminate it completely. I don't want to have any opacity to it. So I'm going to slide my opacity slider all the way up to 100. And for any kind of blemishes that I want completely eliminated, that's what I'm going to do with my slider. I'm going to sli slide my opacity so that it doesn't blend. It more just samples from another region. So guys, there you have it. That is some advanced editing in Lightroom 5 using the healing brush tool and changing the opacity so that you can blend more in with the natural parts of the area that you're affecting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you soon.